Hey, this is Ryan of Happy Healthy Vegan. So, Joe Rogan, as you probably know, has a long history of making videos and tweets promoting his radical belief that plants, just like animals and humans, they are sentient beings. Yes, according to Joe Rogan, plants can feel pain. They even know when they're being eaten. So Joe made a pretty recent video based on this relatively new study about how plants can respond to sound vibrations caused by caterpillars chewing on them. And Joe went on to make some pretty outrageous conclusions based on this study. They f***ing scream, yeah, man. Right? They, they make noise. In case you're wondering, Joe's talking about plants there. According to Joe Rogan, based on this study, plants scream and they make noise. And Joe's not the only one making giant leaps of logic here. The Sun magazine made a headline about how plants can tell when humans are eating them based on this study, even though the study only looked at caterpillars eating plants. And the Sun went on to further make a little jab at vegans, saying, hey, what are vegans going to eat now? Plants are a life form. And we have this thing in our head that because they don't move, Oh, they must be stupid. Hmm. Um, maybe you think like that, Joe, but I've yet to meet a person who thinks plants are stupid. They're neither stupid nor intelligent. They don't have brains. Mm -hmm. But they're in some way communicating with each other in a method that we don't totally understand. Yeah. Which fucks vegans hard. Yeah, right. That whole self-righteousness and all the craziness that comes along with being a vegan. And oh, really? Self-righteousness and craziness comes along with being vegan? Really? Is that some kind of known fact, Joe? Or are you just projecting a little bit there? Uh, Cruelty-free. Yeah. Not to those screaming plants <laughs> that you can't hear. They fucking scream, yeah, man. Yeah, right. They, they make noise. What in the world are you talking about, Joe? Plants scream, they make noise. I mean, that's just physically impossible. And nowhere in this study did they imply that plants scream or make any noise. What are you smoking? And does that stuff scream when you smoke it? They, and they know when they're being eaten. That's one of the weirder things. Yeah. If you place sounds of a caterpillar eating leaves next to a tree, some trees change the composition, like the taste structure of the way the plants taste. All right, first of all, Joe, this study did not look at insects eating trees. The insects were eating a small flowering plant related to mustard and cabbage. Using a special laser microphone, the MU scientists recorded the vibrations, or sounds, of caterpillars chewing on plant leaves. They then played those chewing sounds to plants before allowing caterpillars to eat the leaves of the plants. All right, ignoring the fact that Joe got a tree confused with a small flowering plant, let's see what the researchers actually found here. Did they find that plants know that they're being eaten, that plants scream in pain? What we found was that having been exposed to those vibrations, those chewing vibrations for a few hours, primed the plants so that when they were attacked by caterpillars, they responded with much higher levels of these mustard oils that are toxic to caterpillars. So yeah, that's a fascinating finding here that playing sounds, sound vibrations of caterpillars eating plants triggers a chemical reaction in these plants that prevents the caterpillars from eat, eating them any longer. But as the researchers point out, this is nothing new. It's long been known that since insects are the biggest consumers of plants on land, that over millions of years of evolution, many plants have evolved a mechanism to detect and react to when being eaten. But anyway, let's see how Joe reacts to all of this. Like, so these giraffes starve to death because upwind, certain giraffes would be eating, and then the wind comes down and through either a smell or sound or some method of transportation that we, or transmission that we're not totally aware of. First of all, there are no mention of giraffes anywhere in the study, and if there were, there would be no way for these tall creatures to bend all the way down and eat this tiny shrub near the ground. But ignoring that fact there that Joe got wrong, yeah, it's not some mystery. What's going on here? How do the plants communicate? He makes it sound like some crazy unknown intelligence. As the researchers clearly said, it's all about vibrations, sound vibrations in the air. So that's the entire study there. And I wanna make it absolutely clear that nowhere in this study do any of the researchers even remotely suggest that plants have intelligence or are intelligent, that they're sentient, that they know that they're being eaten, that they have feelings. Yet Joe has the boldness to say that 
his opinions on plants here is based on peer-reviewed studies. So these are scientific peer-reviewed papers and articles that reference scientific peer-reviewed papers that are dealing with this emerging knowledge on the intelligence of plants. Well, it might be based on peer-reviewed studies, but it's not based on the conclusions of the authors. So Joe's going at it absolutely alone here. So why is Joe such a pro-plants are sentient beings person? Well, some clues may be found in earlier interviews of his. I think they're a kind of life that um, it doesn't move. And because it doesn't move, we, uh, and they, they can't scream. So which is it, Joe? Can plants scream or not? We assume that they don't have emotions. Yeah, it's a pretty safe assumption that plants don't have emotions, based on many solid reasons. First of all, none of these studies that you like to refer to, like this one here, make any suggestion that plants are sentient and have emotions. In order to have emotions, let's name some emotions here, like anger, embarrassment, love, hope, fear, and the like. Well, how can you have emotions like that without having a brain or a central nervous system? Let's say we remove Joe's brain and central nervous system. God forbid, you know, if that were to happen, but Joe would be unable to have emotions anymore. These vegans, or these people are bad, and I think a lot of them are sort of misinformed, but they definitely don't want to know that it might be that these animals, or that these life forms, rather, are just as intelligent as some animals. Joe, I, I think you're doing a huge disservice here by confusing intelligence, the kind that animals and mammals have, with the miracle of life that you see in plants. I've seen it. I've grown tomatoes from seed. They germinate. They turn into a mature plant. They put out a mature fruit that you can eat, and you could throw the seed out and repeat the cycle again. Yeah, it's awesome, but nowhere in there do you see intelligence in the sense that you're talking about here comparing the intelligence of some animals to plants. Plants, will, as amazing as they are, will never be able to make a rational decision, never be able to feel embarrassment like, say, an animal can. You're just way off here, Joe. That these plant life forms, in their own way, have some new kind of alien intelligence. And you, you've done mushrooms. You know that feeling when you do mushrooms, like when you're around trees and shit. You're like, oh, these things are alive, man. I mean, you had to take psychedelic mushrooms to realize that plants and trees are alive. I mean, that should be plainly obvious, completely not on mushrooms, which kind of begs the question, what kind of drug would Joe Rogan need to take to figure out that animals are alive? So the way I see it, all Joe is really trying to do with this radical theory that plants are sentient and can feel pain, it's a tactic I see that carnivores use to justify their ways. So obviously these arguments from vegans that Joe has been hearing all these years, it's getting to him and he has gotten defensive and has to go on this radical theory. Hey, it's morally equivalent to kill plants as it is animals. So according to Joe's theory then, if I'm driving down the street and I need to make a last second swerve to avoid an accident, it makes no difference morally if I swerve right and run over some of Joe's dogs or if I swerve left into his neighbor's yard and run over a garden of carrots. They're morally the same. And to show you just how flawed Joe's reasoning is here, let's give it to him. Let's say he's right that plants have feelings, they're sentient, and they have moral value. Well, that still wouldn't justify Joe's carnivorous ways. I mean, if he really cared about lowering suffering for all sentient beings out there, well, what are farm animals fed? They're fed plants. And if humans just ate plants and didn't eat animals, there'd be about one-tenth of the plants needed to be raised and killed and, and screaming in order for humans to live. So even if you give him what he's arguing for, it still doesn't justify his belief. So anyway, leave your questions and comments down below. Do plants have feelings? Do they experience anger and embarrassment and joy as Joe seems to be implying here? And what basis can you make that claim since none of these studies make any claim even remotely suggesting that plants have consciousness? intentionality, rationality, sentience. So let me know what your thoughts are down below. Let me know if you think Joe's completely whack as I do. Anyway, um, thanks for watching. Leave your comments, like this video, and until next time, this goes to Joe Rogan. Stop eating dead animals, baby, and keep it carved, baby. Keep it carved.